Hi guys, it's Hadi again from HM Studio. In this video, I'll show you how to do interior lighting with V-Ray 5 and 3ds Max. But before we start, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Now, let's move over to 3ds Max and start the project. As always, we're going to start with the render settings. Here, we need to adjust the size, which I've already done that. For image sampler, I'm going to use the progressive, but let's decrease the max subdivs and increase the noise threshold. I'm going to use Reinhardt as the color mappings type and decrease the burn value down to 0.05. As for the GI engines, I'm going to use the irradiance map and light cache. Let's set the preset to very low and decrease the subdivs down to 30. And as for the last step, let's decrease this number down to 300. The next step is to enable the override material and assign a simple VR material to that. Since we want the light to come inside the room, we need to exclude the windows and curtains from the override material. In order to do that, first we need to group all of them together, then we can exclude them from the override material from here. Now we're ready to add the V-Ray Sun. First, let's go to the Create panel and select the V-Ray Sun in the V-Ray subcategory. Then we can create the Sun in the top view. Here, V-Ray will ask you if you want to use the V-Ray Sky as your environment map, which is our intention. So let's hit OK and continue. I'm going to start the interactive rendering to see what we got so far. We still cannot see the sun's effect and to fix that we just need to move it up along the z-axis. Okay, here's our sunlight. Now you can simply move the sun around to find the perfect angle for your project. This is one of the most important part of the lighting process so make sure to take your time with that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this one and I'm going to keep it this way, but let's just increase the sun size to make the shadows a bit softer. I guess 6 is a good number and these shadows are soft enough. I can just simply disable the override material and start rendering right now and this would be the result. Uh, it was pretty easy, right? But let's just add some artificial lights into the scene and make it a little bit more interesting. Alright, in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of the sunlight. So let's just move it to the other side of the building where we don't have any windows. Then select the camera and increase the target exposure value up to 12. Now let's start the render to see the changes that we've made so far. As you can see our render is much darker now. Let's decrease the exposure value down to 11. Okay, this is much better. Now we're going to make it a bit brighter by adding some halogen lights and some hidden lights on the sides. Alright, let's go to the front view and start adding our IES lights into the scene. In order to get a better distribution of light, I'm going to move these targets around to cover the whole room.
Okay, it's time to add our IS file to our lights. I'm going to use this one. Now, let's make it a bit warmer and start the interactive rendering to see what we got. I think they're not bright enough. Let's increase the intensity up to 2000. Okay, they look perfect. Now let's add our hidden lights. Let's go to the top view and add a rear light with a rectangular shape right here. Now let's make a copy for the other side, but I'm going to make it a bit smaller since I don't want the light on top of the curtain. Okay, let's start the render and see what we got. Well, this one is not bright enough also. Let's increase the intensity and make it a bit warmer. Okay, it looks good. Let's repeat the whole process for this desk lamp over here as well. Okay, the lighting process is done. I'm going to render this shot with materials and I'm going to show you how to use adjustment layers to make your renders more interesting. Alright guys, here is our raw render which looks dull, but there are a few steps that we can make it more interesting. First of all, let's add an exposure layer on top and increase this value for a tiny bit. Then let's add a filmic tone map on top and then choose the power curve. Then we can play with these sliders until we are happy with the result. Okay, now let's add a curves adjustment layer and see what we can do with that. As for the last step, I'm going to use a lookup table file with a very low opacity. Okay guys, it looks nice. I did some more post-production with Photoshop and here are the results. As always, I hope that you find this tutorial useful and please don't hesitate to ask your questions in the comment section and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Have a good day and see you next time.